What's up YouTube? Landry here, ready to bring you the next story of hidden civil engineering projects. This time, we're heading to New York City, and specifically the borough of Brooklyn. To start things off, let's clarify the situation in Brooklyn. Unlike other boroughs, like the Bronx or Queens, Brooklyn has a significantly limited number of highways. But why is that? Brooklyn's unique urban layout, a product of its history and development, has contributed to this situation. Unlike Manhattan, which has a grid system of streets and avenues, Brooklyn streets are often narrow and winding. This makes it challenging to fit major highways into the borough without demolishing historic neighborhoods and displacing residents. What Brooklynites say when it comes to building or even fixing existing highways? Forget about it. Let's go into the current state of the only interstate in Brooklyn, Interstate 278. Brooklyn's only interstate, I-278, also the Brooklyn-Queens Expressway and Gowanus Expressway, has some of the worst traffic delays in New York City. It doesn't matter what time of day or what day of the week it is. It could be 4 a.m. and you could wind up playing Tetris in traffic somewhere on the BQE. One specific section of the BQE is literally falling apart. The Brooklyn Heights section of the BQE which is built as a triple cantilever, is in worse shape than the New York Giants. That team is sorry, so that's saying something. The city has known about this issue for decades, and it's finally getting to the point of no return. The Brooklyn Heights section of the BQE is literally crumbling. It's not an exaggeration. It's an accident away from causing a disaster that would garner international media coverage and the city of New York knows it. That's why recently, they have reduced the lane total for east and westbound traffic from three lanes to two lanes each way. This measure to reduce the load and stress this aging part of the expressway is under on a daily basis. This road is being held together by toothpicks and bubblegum found under bar stools in Williamsburg dive bars. It's atrocious. No one can agree on what's best for the BQE. Some people want to bury it and dig a tunnel that would cost tens of billions of dollars that New York does not have. Other people want to demolish buildings adjacent to the BQE, move the BQE closer to the East River and put it at ground level, or even get rid of the whole thing in general. Demolishing the highway would cost tens of thousands of vehicles to seek other routes through the already crowded streets of Brooklyn and burying the expressway in a similar fashion to the big dig in Boston would cost a tremendous amount of money that New York State just does not have. So I think I've done a pretty good job of painting the picture in terms of how political interstate highways running through New York City's largest boroughs can be. And Interstate 278 will have a separate video on unbuilt extensions and proposed upgrades that were canceled. But now, let's shift to one of the most ridiculous proposals for a highway we might come across on this channel. You already know who I'm going to introduce as the culprit for this project, and there would be no one else on planet Earth capable of thinking up something like this. Good old Robert Moses. Robert Moses isn't even the biggest part in this story today. He had help. He was the antagonist that gets taken out only to reveal an even bigger threat. So without further ado, let's get into and discuss the wild plans developed for Interstate 878 or the Cross Brooklyn Expressway. First, big shout out to Andrew Lynch, who provided the map of unbuilt highways around New York City for this channel to use. Thanks, Andrew. In 1929, New York City began formulating a post-war plan for its highway system and development for the next 50 years. The idea was to make a series of highways to encircle New York City Hall. The city further developed these plans in 1941, including it in the master plan, Express Highways, Parkways, and Major Streets. One of the roads within this plan was the Cross Brooklyn Express Highway. The road was to serve as a connection between the Southern Parkway, which is now known as the Belt Parkway, and the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, which is now known as the Hugh Carey Tunnel. Then, in 1955, good old Robert Moses got his hands on the plans as New York City and the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority and the Port Authority of New York looked to further develop the existing regional highway grid. The original 1929 master plan, express highways, parkways, and major streets was used as a baseline. And Robert Moses had five shots of whiskey and started foaming at the mouth 
when he was assigned the ability to improve on the original 1929 plans for New York City. In this video, we will be discussing exactly what the plans were for the Cross Brooklyn Expressway, which neighborhoods would have been served, and touch a few other unbuilt roads in Brooklyn the Cross Brooklyn Expressway would have connected. In 1955, it was acknowledged that there were several gaps and shortcomings in the regional highway system, especially in Brooklyn. The lack of a complete southern bypass route around Manhattan for commercial vehicles was identified, as there was no expressway connecting the Verrazano Bridge and southern areas of Brooklyn and Queens. The Cross Brooklyn Expressway, among other routes, was formulated to serve an area of about 3 million people without any decent interstate infrastructure. Considering the only highway available at the time was the Southern Parkway, which is now known as the Bell Parkway, which cannot be used for commercial vehicles. The roads that were introduced to solve this issue in particular were the Cross Brooklyn Expressway and the Bushwick Expressway, or the Interstate 78 extension. The parent route for existing Interstates 278, the BQE, unsigned Interstate 478, or the Hugh Carey Tunnel, Interstate 678, or the Van Wick Expressway, and unsigned Interstate 878. Interstate 878 actually exists, but it's a micro version of the original plans. Interstate 878 runs adjacent to the Bell Parkway in Queens, right on the cusp of JFK, and runs only one way eastbound. Interstate 878 is not only unsigned, so most people don't even know it exists, but it's the shortest interstate in the entire country at only 0.7 miles. That's less than three laps on your high school track. Through the 1950s and 60s, Robert Moses favored the Bushwick Expressway's construction, arguing that the proposed road would provide a direct link between Lower Manhattan and JFK Airport, which was called Idlewild Airport at the time. He believed the Bushwick Expressway should be built first, and then the Cross Brooklyn Expressway should be built afterwards. In 1965, the New York City Planning Commission approved the 12-mile-long Cross Brooklyn Expressway and Bushwick Express, which would have solved the regional highway grids gaps and served Brooklyn and Manhattan with necessary highway infrastructure. In 1966, Mayor John V. Lindsay formally asked New York State to cancel the funding to the Bushwick Expressway to fund the Cross Brooklyn Expressway citing that the Bushwick Expressway would not only cause more rush hour traffic to pour into Lower Manhattan, but would also displace many more residents than the proposed Cross Brooklyn Expressway. Robert Moses argued that both routes were necessary. The Bushwick Expressway lost its steam in terms of support, and in 1966, the Triborough Transit Authority introduced a 17.2 mile plan for the Cross Brooklyn Expressway to stretch from the shadows of the Verrazano Bridge to Sunrise Highway at the Queens-Nassau County border. The Cross Brooklyn Expressway was to have eight lanes, four in each direction from the Verrazano Bridge to Nordstrand Flatbush Avenue, and six lanes, three lanes in each direction, from this point east to the Queens-Nassau border. Let's run through the list of interchanges. Motorist entrance and exit would have been built at the Gowanus Expressway, Fort Hamilton Parkway, New Ertrich Avenue, I have no idea how to say that, Northern Flatbush Avenues, where the lane configuration would have been reduced from eight lanes to six lanes, Ralph Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, the Bell Parkway heading westbound, Cross Bay Boulevard, Bushwick Expressway, the Nassau Expressway, the Van Wick Expressway, the Southern Parkway, or now the Bell Parkway, Rockaway Boulevard, the Clearview Expressway Extension, and finally, Sunrise Highway. This eight-lane section of road would start below ground level, or depressed, moving eastward into southern Brooklyn, much like the Cross Bronx Expressway in the Bronx. East of Nordstrand Avenue, the expressway would have reduced its capacity from eight lanes to six lanes, three lanes in each direction, and continue weaving through an elevated viaduct and depressed expressway layout. Here's one of the proposed renderings of the six-lane configuration, from 1965 of course because these plans look prehistoric. The Cross Brooklyn Expressway over the Long Island Railroad Bay Ridge right of way. The original plans had two tracks of east and westbound train traffic at the bottom. Then, above that would have been two carriageways of interstate standard three-lane traffic moving through and above the Brooklyn streets. 
Of course, these were the 1965 plans. The Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority and the actual mad scientist of this video, Mayor Lindsay, dropped a remix to the plans for the Cross Brooklyn Expressway, which could still be considered preposterous even to this day. The route was shortened under the revised Linear City Proposal in 1967. The 1967 plans, announced by Mayor John V. Lindsay, were portrayed as a unifying force in the community. Mayor John V. Lindsay's Linear City plans had a goal to create a multiple-use transportation thoroughfare where expressway and transit lines would be created below the city streets, then above the transportation avenue, at least 6,000 new housing units would be constructed along the proposed route, and also a new campus for the City University of New York at Brooklyn College would be created along the route. This campus was to house a potential 20,000 students from K-12 to the collegiate level. The linear city was also designed to attract new businesses, with access from outside the borough being improved by the transit line and roadway's existence. It's insane, but extremely advantageous at the same time. This proposal was to cost $1.3 billion in 1967, which adjusted for today's inflation would have been $12 billion. This total would have included a whopping $1 billion of money needed to acquire land and property for the right-of-way of the project. That's $9.2 billion adjusted for today's inflation. To put that in perspective, you could build four MetLife stadiums around New York City for the cost of what just the property acquisition would be for the right-of-way. And this is also excluding the potential accumulated costs due to the construction delays from public and private groups going to legal war to prevent the road's construction. Let's go even further into the potential extra costs and check out the Big Dig in Boston. The Big Dig in Boston was originally proposed to cost $2.6 billion, and due to the aforementioned delays that projects normally encounter, the cost skyrocketed to $14.8 billion in 2007 money. Just for giggles, let's apply the math to the Cross Brooklyn Expressway's linear city. Let's multiply the original 1967 amount of $1.3 billion by 5.5, like the Big Dig in Boston. That $1.3 billion just became $7.5 billion in 1967. Insane, right? We're not done. Now adjust that for today's inflation. We get a mind-blowing $69 billion. Nice. That is an impossible amount of money to gather for a road project in today's day and age. But let's go even further. You could build $1.6 billion stadiums like MetLife Stadium for every NFL team that's 32 stadiums, and still have 11 stadiums left over. Never going to happen, but Lord knows the Chicago Bears and Washington Commanders could use it. Back to history now, where in 1967, the Linear City and Cross Brooklyn Expressway proposal got so much steam that they proposed an extension route of Interstate 878 eastward through Queens as a Nassau Expressway extension. Here you can see just where the Nassau Expressway extension was to carry the route past JFK Airport onwards to the Queens-Nassau border. This extension we will cover in a future video as it heads deep into Nassau County to areas you, you would not expect. Now that I've set the scene for how insane this road was going to be, let's get to the inevitable opposition it was going to face. In 1967, months after the original announcement by New York City Mayor John V. Lindsay, the public opposition was erupting like an Icelandic volcano. Former Brooklyn legislator Stanley Steingut, sorry if I mispronounced that Stanley, said, The people in Brooklyn are up in arms. We believe there are ways to have an arterial highway without dislocating the whole face of Brooklyn. The mayor wants to run an expressway through the residential areas of Brooklyn. We believe he should sit down with the interested groups and rethink this whole matter. By 1968, the expressway was gathering funding and was placed on the federal highways map. All that was needed was approval by the New York State Legislature. This was so close to happening. And the plans were placed in a briefcase and brought to Albany, where the expressway passed the Republican-led State Senate, but failed to receive approval by the Democratic-led State Assembly. Defeated, Mayor John V. Lindsay withdrew and ceased backing these plans in May of 1969, which, by the way, is the same year we went to the moon. Sending a man to the moon in 1969 was more likely than getting this road done. Like, what were Robert Moses and John V. Lindsay thinking? 
Finally, in 1971, Governor at the time, Nelson Rockefeller, officially nuked the plans for the Cross Brooklyn Expressway from New York's interstate highway system. The Cross Brooklyn Expressway provides another example of community activism preventing major landscape changing civil engineering projects from coming to fruition. Several Brooklyn communities coming together and using their voice to prevent their relocation due to advantageous city planning and politicking succeeded. Well, there you have it. A look at the unbuilt Cross Brooklyn Expressway. What are your thoughts on the Cross Brooklyn Expressway? Do you think we should have just sent it and built the road? Comment below. I hope you enjoyed this journey as much as I enjoyed researching it. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you love this video, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me as I have a goal of 1,000 subscribers by Valentine's Day of 2024. Thanks for joining me today. And as always, keep exploring and cherishing the history that shapes our world. See you in the next video.